So hello, Matt Mitchell from Matt Mitchell and the Cold Hearts, amongst other bands, obviously. Welcome to Just Chops and Podcast. And uh, I think you know my co-host, David. Yeah, we. I think we've met on a few occasions, haven't we, Dave? Yeah, we have, yeah. So we've uh, met when you were with Colour and Noise, and then um, the last saw you then at, at Planet Rockstock, when uh, you were with the Cold Hearts. That was a really good evening, I was. That was, yeah, that, that was a, a good memory there, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Really, really good, wasn't it? You're sporting your Colour of Noise t-shirt there. Yeah, like, well, I, I just nice. showed my cousin now. I don't know whether you actually saw this or not. So I've got the Colour of Noise tat there as well. Like, if you can see it up the top there. Very nice. <laughs> that's, that's um, yeah. Well, I was going to say that's never going to go, but then, of course, you can, you can always get things covered up these days. <laughs> or lasered <laughs> off. That's or it. lasered off, yeah. No, or just get your arm cut off. They're all, they're all here to stay. The missus reckons when I die, she reckons she's going to peel my arm and then get it framed. Because she said it's probably the most expensive thing we own. Hmm. What if <laughs> she dies get, before get you? Framed. Well, I don't know. I think she's planning on me doing it first. That's right, yeah. So, Sorry, then, we, Dave. Yeah, so if we start the current day then, so we'll start with your, your, your solo stuff with Matt. Um, Cold Hearts. You had your first self-titled album out in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, which was really, really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, Black Diamonds is hell of a rocking track. It's a great track. Eh? It's just really good. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's um, It, it kept it really quickly. Uh, it's a co-write, that, that song. But, of course, when you're in the studio putting something together, you never really know if it's going to hit or miss, you know, um, I've always found that really, you know, you sometimes you think, yeah, this is the song, this one's going to be brilliant. And it's the one that kind of doesn't come out so well or something. But uh, that one was really quickly recorded and just came out. I couldn't have been happier with that one, actually. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Like oh, this, you know, because it's such a great rocking track. You know, when, I, when I've seen you play it live, it's, it's a really, really good track. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And then there's some, some uh, more ballady type tracks. You've got Home on there as well, which is obviously about going through a struggle and then coming back through the other side. So that's a, yeah. that's a good track as well, man. Home's it's probably uh that's probably one of my that's probably my favorite track on the on the, on that album, actually, I'd say. Um because of the way it was written and um and, and the style it's in. Uh you know, I, I really like it. The whole album, in fact, actually is is a little bit left field. For, for you know, since the, from the Color of Noise record, it was it was quite different. So, um, and actually different from the Fury and stuff again. Uh, it was quite nice for me to be able to have an opportunity to put something out there that I just wanted to do. You know, yeah, it's one of those kind of records. You know, so yeah. I was yeah. really pleased with uh, with the response. Yeah, yeah, I like that home song. That was really good. Yeah, it's a nice track. It is a good track. And then you've got um, Unable, which is obviously about mental health. It is, yeah. Yeah, so that's a that's a good track as well. I like that. Really good track. So Yeah, I, I um, chose to put that out at the end of last year. Um, yes, in conjunction with um, World Mental Health, trying to raise awareness. And, uh, I mean you know, a little more awareness. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's something that I feel is is always good to, to mention, not just on World Mental Day or Mental Health Week, but like, um, you know, these things should be talked about all the time, really, you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was just an opportunity to, to, to stand up and say, hey, you know, let's think about this, you know. Um, and yeah, and as the song is, is related to that, it was a, it was a good, good choice. Also, you know, that whole thing about, I think it was the fourth single from the album. Um, and then, of course, I've left it there. <laughs> you got any more than that. <laughs> yeah, because the other ones then were Day to Watch You. Day to Watch, yeah. That was another single that came out as well. And you, you, you released that as well, haven't you? Yeah, well, actually, yes, the, the acoustic version. It's not acoustic, it's piano and voice. Um, but it's uh, it's available on the CD of the album. So, um, hey, <laughs> look at that. 
Look at that. Is it signed? It, it will be. We'll see you at Steelers. <laughs> oh, it is. It's signed in, yes, it's signed inside. Oh. So I obviously had a pre order. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, there's two, there's two extra versions that are just on the CD version. Um, but you know, maybe there'll be some um, something something else at some point you know there's going to be a, another release at some point so i'll probably do something else as well yeah that's cool and with so with your with your the cold hearts so you're on some really really big stages as well and you know represented in some uh, in some of the good festivals in the uk so you know planet rock stock obviously you're going to be playing at steel house this year you got the dementia awareness one as well that you've been on so yeah yeah yes, yes that's right yeah um Got very lucky with this, uh, the Cold Heart event of mine. Um, Rambling Man was uh, was great. Uh, Chris Ingham has been, in fact, Chris Ingham uh, has been great to me for the last 10 to 10, 12 years. In fact, uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's another story. You know, he, he, he really um, championed another one of my bands, Furion. Um, so it was great for him to get me on Rambling Man. Um, and yeah, Steel House is coming up. I can't wait to get the mountain, um, only because I've been there before, so I know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I've had some good shows actually. I've had some runs um, with the Cold Hearts so far. Um, had some good shows. Got some good ones coming up with the Choir Boys again and Broken Wit Rebels. They're a great band, so yeah. I'm looking forward to. Um, although they're just acoustic, actually, I'm just um, opening up for those guys acoustically. But uh, I love doing that as well. So, um, it, it's all good. You know, the more the merrier. You know, it's all welcome. And, and as far as festivals go, um, yeah, it's all welcome. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. It gives you, a, gives you a broader, you know, it gives you broader exposure to to some new fans, doesn't it? Which uh, you know, uh, pretty much most of the guests that I've been to, you know, a lot of the bands that I've discovered. I've been through festivals to be honest so yeah. you know you, you turn up a bit earlier to see the the band that you want to watch and you might end up watching somebody else or you stay on a bit longer and watch somebody else and then all of a sudden you uh you know you fall for another band it's great yeah 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 absolutely um i mean even playing festivals you know i've found bands that I remember there's some bands uh, from playing festivals, say in Belgium and stuff from back in the day. Like, wow, that you know, who who are they? Mm. You know, and why have I not ever heard of them before? You know, especially in you know, that whole thing around Europe. There's there's just so many. Things. Um, I remember going back to. I oh, wanted you guys speaking from Holland. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. You I'm are in Holland, yeah. Yeah. Wow, I I I kind of thought I heard that in um, in another one of your interviews and. Um, I played a festival in Rotterdam called, uh, I think it's called Baroque Festival. Okay. And this was going back, this was going back 2012, uh, something like that, in Rotterdam, yeah, Baroque. And it was through Monster Energy. And um, that, there's probably about three bands from that festival that I'd never heard of, but I'm still listening to now, you know. Mm -hmm. Karma to Burn being one of a band called Karma to Burn fantastic band um and another one called honky <laughs> okay. yeah great stuff so that, that was that was just outside of rotterdam that was um bar Oak. but i remember at the time i was saying it wrong as well so I'm maybe saying yeah it probably <laughs> yeah that's good and then um so if you've got some news coming out with regards to the cold hearts yes some... i mean um I've literally just finished tracking an album. Um, I'm extremely excited about it because there's there's some whole new things about this out for me. Um, most of it was written in lockdown. Um, there's a lot of guitars played from myself, um, it, which is really exciting for me because obviously I, I play lots of guitar, but I never really put it out there or, or I don't even really think about it that much. I just, I just use it at all um, to write songs with. Um, I've always just seen myself more as a singer, but between me and the co-producer, um, we both kind of decided, oh, these parts are really good. So we're going to keep some of these, which is great because what I normally do is I normally just say to the guitarist, you play all the parts. Um, just please, please play all the parts, you know. Yeah. But now what we've got is a mixture of um, 
uh, my own guitars, and then Mara Laconi, who is the uh, Cold Heart guitar player, fantastic uh, guitar player and fantastic guy. Um, him and also some extra guitars from Mark Alberici, who is co producing And um, yeah, it's going into the oven now, so to speak. So it's, it's with the mixer now. Although there's a few setbacks where um, people are having to do different different work on different things and blah 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 but i will hear um maybe half of that record over the next three or four weeks okay so i'm just it's one of those things dave where i've been i've through the whole process i've been trying not to this is gonna be amazing or something yeah i've just been like just letting it take its course um but then the last things i heard i was just like Oh no, now I'm really <laughs> you know, so I just really love the songs and um yeah, it's gonna be good. So I mean, as far as as far as it being released and anyone else hearing it, of course that's gonna be down the line. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um so yeah, nothing's nothing's there's a lot of talk at the moment with uh, a lot of different people and different things. So at the moment I just wanted to go, I'm gonna make a record with some great songs. And it's and I want it to sound good, and I want these people working on it, and so that's that's the that's the first thing, mm. and uh, yeah, we're at that stage. As I said, it's now in the oven, so we'll see what happens. So, are you likely to give us a taster at Steelers of any of your new tracks, or is it going to be everything off your first album? Well, this is the thing, actually. Um, yeah, I probably will, knowing me. Um, I remember, I remember Con did the same thing when we played Spouse. So I think we had just, um, the album, I'm, I'm pretty, the album wasn't out at all. Mm. We didn't have the album out then. And uh, I think we had just written, can you hear me? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we played, we played it still out straight away. You know, so we just thought, yeah, why the hell not? Um, I remember that. That was, was great. So, yeah, I'll probably stick, stay with that kind of thing and 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 put it out there. But um, it depends, really, if um, if anyone's no, don't do that, mm. you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm expecting to play something new. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, cool. Good. Good. So the the band that you were they still the same guys from from Planet Rockstock? Everybody's still the same. Yeah. yeah well, the the thing about Matt Mitchell and the Cold Arts, and this is why I, I that. I, I never really wanted to come out with something under my own name, just under my own name. Um, because for one, I thought, uh, you know, I want, it was obviously a solo record, but um, I wanted to have a collective of, of, of musicians and different people and things come in and out really. So of course that's why it's, uh, myself and a collective you know so there's a whole bunch of different musicians i try and stay to the same band um but every now and again there might be a different guitarist or a different bass player um and then sometimes i might go and record in a different fashion and use a cellist or uh, use a pianist or or sometimes have a keys player and sometimes not you know yeah. so i think it i think it's kind of cool that it gives me that option but yeah the main guitar the main guitarist is Marrow. The main drummer is Matt Cherry. Dominic Ladd and Giulio Grancelli both play bass. Um, keys, it's um, it's a flip up between a couple of people. And um, yeah, it's it, it's it's good like that mm. for me, I suppose. You know, um, I love the band thing, um, but uh, with this, it works really well like that. Um, it seems to, and it, and it seems to be kind of like, a happy a happy thing for everyone for it yeah. to work that way you know yeah cool oh, that's good so when, when you... i think also because um i'm <laughs> just chiming also because um no one can end it really except for myself yeah you know? yeah it's like oh yeah we're not going to do this anymore you know so it's just like tell myself that you know yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 that's a good yeah I know it's a good thing yeah so, so um <laughs> with regards to the album then matt do you think it'll be coming out here? I very much doubt that, okay. but um, yeah, I can't see that happening. But maybe, uh, maybe a single or two. Okay. But for the whole record, I, I can't see that really happening at this point. It's 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 possible, you know. Um, but with these things, you really need you really need a good few months 
to organize everything properly and etc yeah. etc et you know yeah um so yeah unfortunately it would probably I say unfortunately because I want to get it out there and by the time it's out, I'll be bored stiff of it probably. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, so it would probably get early spring thing. I would have thought, but you never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So um, talk a little bit about colour and noise then. So obviously that was a, a venture that you had around about 2014, 15, you met up with Bruce um, yeah. and uh, released the album. Um, how, how did you get to, to know Bruce? Did you know Bruce before that? or I knew Bruce, yes. Um, I, knew Bruce, I knew Bruce from the Little Angels. I mean, the first time I ever saw Bruce, I was watching Bruce and Toby and the guys supporting Bon Jovi when I was um, in my early teens up at Milton Keynes Bowl, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, we, I remember thinking it's quite weird, like, you know, I ended up sort of doing a band, you know? Yeah. Because I was I was just a fan of all, all of that, you know, back in the day when I was a kid. And um, yeah, that's the first time I sort of ever saw Bruce. But of course I knew of him from the Brighton area because he ran the music college. Um, and then he started coming to see the band, my band Fury. Um, we were one of those bands that we would do extremely well um, in our hometown. I think it's, it's one of those things that a lot of bands, you know, and I think they, it's a good way to start, you know, doing very well in your hometown and then venture out, you know. And we would always have great shows. We'd always put on a great party and always have a great time. And Bruce was always on the list. Um, and not 10 times he'd turn up to watch the band. Um, and I think that's how he kind of got to know of me. Mm. Um, and basically I, I get through friends of friends a little later on. Um, my name was put in the fold to sing in this project that he wanted to do. Bruce just wanted to do an album. It was time for him to do another record, you know, and um, yeah, they invited me down. And it, it was one of those things where we just on really well. We still get on really well, you know, um, now. Um, and it all just, yeah, clicked very quickly um, for that. So, yeah, that was that was the start of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. Because there's, there's some great tracks on that album as well. It's a, it's a really good album. And it's, Sarah said, no, I miss it. She said she still, when she goes running, it's the track that she uses in her earbuds when she jogs. She said, "Really?" Yeah. She said she did like a half marathon to that to that album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she didn't do it in thirty eight minutes, right? Or whatever it was. <laughs> me, but the, it was obviously. You know, but so you could, you could have drive it like you stole it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so yeah, we we saw you saw you guys within kind of like that twelve months that you were you know you were touring. Um, fortunately, we didn't get to see you in Steel House, but then we saw you at the Dragonfly in the little local venue, Connie Pool. And then we saw you in the Globe where you were with, down there with um, Toesland and then oh, yeah. at Rockstock as well. So we must have seen you about five or six times, I think. And then um, obviously the unfortunate news came out then that uh, you guys were, were going to put it to one side and knock it on the head, which was a real, real shame because that album was an awesome, really, really good album. Yeah, it's it's funny because for me it's um I actually talking about that rec at that album I, I I found the other day um the CD and I was looking at it and I was thinking, oh yeah, you know, I really, I really like the cover thinking back, you know. Yeah. Um I was thinking that's a really cool cover actually. Um great artist over in the States. And um I noticed that it was the very first one. As I look on the back, it said zero 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 one. I was like, oh, yeah. I've got the first one. <laughs> you know, which yeah. But, um, yeah, I was too, I was also gutted to be honest with you at the, um, it was a long course towards, you know, leaning towards this meeting of us just going, oh, well, let's just leave it as a one album thing. Mm. And it's so many, so many reasons, you know, that, that come to that head. And it's funny because we had, we had some cool things lined up. We were just about to open main stage Rambler Man, I think. Um, there were some other things happening. Of course, Steve Strange, um, the agent Steve Strange had, had, had helped us out a lot and got us some great shows and, and bits and pieces. And 
it was at a tipping point, I suppose. The biggest thing is, um, as anyone knows, and anyone that's in a band and, and, and people that, are, that support the bands as well, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, if there's not much support and financial support and label support and different things, it can be very, very tough, you know, yeah. even to get a band up and down the country. I remember, you know, many times people have said, oh, you know, why can't you come here or come there, you know, with, even with different bands. And it's a case of, yeah, you know, we, trust us, we will go it, we will go everywhere, anywhere. But it's just a case of physically being able to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what it was really. Um, especially for Bruce, I, you know, it was just such an eye opener for him. It's like, wow, is this is this what bands have to sort of do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, seriously, it was like a, so with this tour called the Stark Reality Tour, and that's what it was about. Mm. Um, and at that point, the, the lineup of the band had changed, you know, the drum had, uh, um, had gone and the rhythm guitarist had gone. And we actually had Mark Richardson playing drums for us um, on that last egg and also at the last rock stock. So um, you might have seen that one. Mm. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, just just the stability tour. Yeah, it yeah. was um, it was basically us just realizing, okay, if we do another record, you know, how much more of everything do we put into this? You know? yeah. And I think everyone also had other ideas of different things and people were thinking about doing other tours and stuff. And um, I was probably one of the ones to uh, sat and thought, okay, what am I gonna do? What, what am I gonna do now? You know, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, take Fury and off of the side of the mountain that I'd left it on, you know? Yeah. Um, or do something else and um, actually I, I sat down with um, um, Thunder's Danny Bowes was uh, because we toured with them and Danny actually kind of co-managed Colour of Noise um, and uh, he's been great he was absolutely wonderful for advice in fact and um, had a bit of lunch with him one day and just sort of went through it really and said you know what do you think you should do at this point you know yeah. and at that point he, he was the one really that kind of helped me say listen go on this go and do a solo side thing you know um and i'm really pleased i did uh because it was it felt a bit risky at the time but it was great the, the two singles got you know a listed on planet rock and mm -hmm. um loads of radio play in fact and um lots of love and, um yeah and uh one tracks of the week and blah 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 and this that and the other you know it's it it actually it it, it went to heights that i didn't think it would so that was a good thing yeah. but of course most things that go up you know come down as well so uh you know the real with these things is trying to kind of keep it stuck on the wall you know yeah 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 well there's that mountain again yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you know? so, uh, but yeah so very pleased to be very pleased to be here doing stuff you know it's it's um it's it's good you know it's always good yeah but I, i'm because I, I i hadn't heard of furian so the first time i saw come in contact with yourself was good through color of noise because i was a little angels fan and that's how kind of like i yeah. remember i mean yeah so you know and that's how i've started following your career now but I have started to listen to your back catalogue as well. So I've been listening to the Fury and stuff, which is a bit heavier than, yes, a lot does. heavier than Colour of Noise, and it's heavier than your solo stuff as well. It, it really is, yes. It's, um, it's, it's a lot heavier. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, there's a whole sort of Fury and story, really. And, it, and it's not finished, you know. Mm. It wasn't a band that um, ended. Um, in fact, in 2015, uh, we put out the second album and um, yeah, it was still going. In fact, when, when Colour of Noise started, uh, Fury and we went and played um, Woodstock Festival in Poland, which is, they now call it Poland Festival, which is, I couldn't believe it when we, when we landed that. The manager said, oh yeah, you, you're playing second on the uh, on main stage. And I was like, okay, what is this festival, you know? And he was like, oh, it's, it's amazing. And I was thinking, yeah, 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 sure, you know, blah, blah. And when I looked it up, I was like, what? You know, 
And then when we got there, uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's what an amazing, amazing festival um, and the opportunity to do that. So that was the last thing we did. We left it sort of there, always with the view to do another record and carry on. Um, um, fun enough for me, Colour of Noise got so busy that that kept getting sort of slightly put on the back burner. So uh, it's something that's going to be coming up at the moment. Um, now that the first and second album have come home, um, the first album was with Frontiers. Uh, the second album was, was with uh, DreamWorks Records. Um, and they've come home now. So there's plans to, to, to probably do something else at some point, you know, um, because we always loved doing that yeah. you know, um, as well. It was, uh, it was a, it was a, myself and a guy called Chris Green. I don't know if you know Chris. No, I don't know. He now plays, he now plays guitar for Ty Kett. Um, uh, we wrote all the stuff, except for the song that I wrote with Rick Beato, uh, Disappear Again, the main sing the first album. Um, yeah, and we always had fun writing the material, you know. It's kind of heavy, like you said. Yeah. We we kind of put it in that bracket of chin down, alter bridge, maybe, I don't know. It was it was it was meant to be going down those lines, but uh I think it actually came out heavy. It is definitely heavier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really good. It's really good stuff. So uh, Thanks, yeah, so I please that's um that's unfinished business, like you know. It is unfinished yeah. business, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I said, because it was never a case of, oh, we are finishing, blah, blah, blah. You know, there was never any talk of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, now that um, business is being cleared up, you know, uh, contracts have come to an end, etc. Yeah, there's an opportunity now yeah. to be able to um, enjoy doing something new for it. You yeah, know? oh, it'd be cool. They were the, uh, back with the original members then. Well, that was the idea to start with, but again, that would be, um, yeah, it's all, it's all, it would all have to be properly discussed, and yeah, I, I, it would be, yeah, I wouldn't be able to say yeah. I, I kind of love to say yes right now. Yeah, yes. But um, and uh, I did, um, I did vote for that uh, going back a, a few years ago. I remember sort of putting a message out to everybody sort of going, you know, let's do this. And um 80% of 80% of it came back going, yeah. And the other 20 just sort of went, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, okay, well we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know. That's but good. yeah, the original, original, original team would be amazing. But yeah, the back play um Woodstock was um I think it was me and the drummer that were the only the original members, you know. Ah, but, right, okay. And another one of those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be good. What about um, Colour of Noise? You, you said you're still friendly with Bruce. Any chance of you and Bruce doing it together, maybe? Oh, man. You know, we, I would, um, I'd love that. And in fact, actually, um, there is me and Bruce of, um, now this is, this is, this is pretty cool. He is going to be um, a small part of something that's going to be happening as well. So um, I won't say much more about it. So there is a kind of, but it's not colour of noise. There is like a, a very small musical reunion between the two of us, oh, um, cool. so, which is very cool. But uh, yeah, we always talk when we get on the phone or something like that, you know, it's always a case of, oh, have you played any music, man? Yeah, blah, 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 doing this, doing that. Um, and we even, I think we even mention it from time to time, you know, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do this, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, and I think Bruce, Bruce is a very busy man, you know? Yeah. But, He's moved a lot now, hasn't he? He's moved up to the Shetlands or Orkneys or something. Yeah, he's um, he's 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 all over the place, you know. Um, and um, yeah, he's he's doing he's doing great, you know. I'm sure I'm sure he says hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Toby touched on something as well, didn't he, with uh, Little Angels when we interviewed Toby? So, oh Maybe yeah, I mean, I, I hope I hope so, you know. Yeah, um, that's I mean, 
I'm a, I'm a, you know, me as a 14 year old was a, I was a little Angels fan, you know, mm. um, and alongside with uh, the Quiet Boys and a lot of these other people that I kind of, you know, get to do gigs with now. And I love that, you That's know. That's cool. That is good. Yeah, it kind of is, you know, uh, for me. Um, but uh, yeah, it was great to see the Little Angels on their live union, actually. Yeah. That was, that was really cool. So I'd love to see them guys be able to go and do something again, you know. Yeah. Um, as I'm sure every, everyone would, you know. Yeah. Uh, but again, yeah, yeah. Let's, let, let's hope for that one as well. You know? It'd be a cool lineup, wouldn't it? So you could have Little Angels, Wayne Wins. Colour and noise, Matt Mitchell and the cold outs, funeral, <laughs> all on one line. Can you imagine? <laughs> you all know in one, imagine, imagine, right? all in one <laughs> festival. I know, imagine that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? How good would that, that be? Would be? That would be pretty cool, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send some emails out yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, it's it. See what we can organise, it'd be amazing. I'm going to get Skunk and Nancy on it as well with Mark. <laughs> it'd be great, oh, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, because no, some, some of the singles you released with the, it was just you and Bruce when they were stripped back with the colour and noise. Yeah. You, and your vocals on that, mate, awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, not that they're not anyway, but on the stripped back versions, really, really good. Really good. Well, it's funny. For me, colour of noise, uh, I it would be really rude of me to say that I'm not a massive fan of the actual record. Mm. Um, so I won't say that. Um, but for me, Colour of Noise was all about life. Um, mm. There was, we used to rehearse very hard. We used to rehearse all the time. Um, I've still got recordings from the rehearsal rooms where I go, whoa, for me, I'm like, there it is. That's where it is, you know. Even the other day, actually, I, I text Bruce and said, man, I've just been listening to this. You know, it sounded like, remember this, this song and this riff that you had, blah, 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 blah. And, um, that kind of stuff, there was some really exciting stuff actually that just totally got through the net for me. Mm. Um, and But that's the process though, isn't it? Everything, you know, gets whittled down and then what you come out with at the end is, so I, I guess that's why we got so much love for that album. Because what we concentrated down was, was that, but um, yeah, for me, it was always about the live stuff. I don't know if you ever got, um, put a, uh, a seven inch vinyl out once and on the other side i think it was medicine man it was, the yeah. Side, yeah it had a live version of head on yeah from the garage in london and um i i remember hearing that once and thinking yeah that's 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 the one that's it you know <laughs> like for me it was just all about that that live energy and and uh yeah and yeah the band was the band was that for me mm. so going back to what you were saying stripped back versions which just felt totally natural and, and cool yeah. to do and yeah thank you very much i felt um vocally i felt uh really kind of good at that time because we were so busy and i was just so busy you know yeah um constantly constantly singing really you know yeah yeah it's good yeah. really good and then from the furian days then so before that was a band that i i hadn't really heard of involved with called pride yes i mean that yeah that's really what kind of put me on the map really um and we're going right back now uh to before just before digital okay um me and chris was the same guy that that i did fearing with the, the same guy that um as i said chris green and um We'd grown up together, me and Chris. You know, we were we buddies since we were about, yeah, about 14, 15. Um, had our first very, our very first band together, uh, a band that we called Spread Eagle, which is a terrible name, which we then, rea <laughs> which we then, which we then realized there actually was a band called Spread Eagle in America. Right, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, of course, but we didn't know that. I mean, you know, um, Chris's dad was a musician, a uh, lovely guy, a uh, very cool musician as well. And I think that, I think it was actually him um, that named our band anyway. So we had this band 
thing led to another anything you know it, it I can't remember what happened with it now um, but it dispersed and we ended up getting into different things and we all ended up sort of doing different bands and etc um, I ventured off um, and did a band funnily enough flipping the script with the guy that's now co-producing this record of mine the next record which is crazy he's based out in Nashville He's actually currently on tour with Tiffany in the States at the moment. Remember Tiffany? Yeah, yeah. um, Yeah, he's a pop star. And uh, she's cool. And um, really, so very, it's all sort of very randomly coming round. And then me and Chris ended up putting a band together uh, when we were in our late teens. And at that point, we were, someone asked us, can you guys put together an album with me there was a chap called Art Gun um, and I'm going to get a deal for it and of course we were like huh you're going to get a deal for it yeah 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 yeah. I'll get I'll get it for this and, and, and we'll do it it has to be in the style of this kind of thing and at the time we were playing pretty progressive kind of maybe even more like Furion mm. perhaps um, and then because we all loved kind of lighter music and everything else, you know, I grew up loving Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, and all that stuff. Um, it felt quite easy to go, right, we're going to do this. And if you've heard any of Pride, it's absolute AOR, you know. So, um, yeah, we did this out. And then, yeah, before I know it, you know, we, he, it was a case of it went out on a label called AOR Heaven, Point Music for Europe and EMI Toshiba. For Japan, and we did a couple of records, and we recorded the first album in a studio called Pearl Street in Liverpool. Um, and I remember Coldplay were, we were in room, we were in the SSL room, and they were in the Neil next to us. And I never forget because Chris came over going, um, oh, "It sounds like shit in there, man," you know, sort of thing. And I was just, and I went and listened, and I was thought, "I'm not sure about that. Actually, I quite like the sound of yeah. it, you know, because." <laughs> You know, we were sort of like long hair and, you know, Skid Row t-shirts on and stuff like that. Where, of course, that, that was a completely different genre of music. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who was upstairs. Of course, Coldplay went on to earn lots and lots of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was weird thinking back because it was all left on the desk. It was just at the, just at the back end of, the, uh, of that time for digital. Mm. Um, so... It's quite cool to think back now that I had that experience just, you know, of actually having to um, oh, do it again. No, do it again. <laughs> you know, like to have to record that way yeah. and um, and leave everything as it was. And I think where there was a bit of um, cut and paste on the tape, we did some stuff for some, some backing vocals and bits and pieces that we did. Anyway, yeah, really, really no- a nice memory. And... Um, I do believe it did quite well for itself, but of course it was just all in a physical form, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, and that band did two albums and, um, and then we decided we really, really wanted to do something a bit more than up to date because at the time it just felt like it was almost very uncool sort of, you know, I mean, the the music that we were doing was was it had one niche market you know um which was the aor like rock fans that would that would just uh that seemed to be there even now you know yeah. it's just yeah. that's yeah. that's the sound that they want um and we wanted to move forward so then we made a really big step and we said we're going to put an enterprise or anyway put an enterprise in us playing it and we created Furion, um, dropped the tuning on the guitars and yeah, I just did that. And uh, we ended up going to uh, America and recorded our first album with now YouTube sensation Rick Beato. <laughs> okay. Um, you've probably seen Rick because he's everywhere online now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then we, we, we just knew him as a producer and Kip Winger actually introduced us to him. Uh, as we were playing some shows with Winger, and he's also a legend, and uh, <laughs> and um, we were like, 
want someone that that can do this sound. And Rick had rec- had produced Shine Down, right? And we that's what we want mm-hmm. that kind of sound. And uh, yeah, they kind of he put us together really. And Rick had demos and was like, "Yeah, let's let's do this," which was which was amazing. So we were in Chicago for a month, and then we were in Atlanta for another month um, recording. And again, that is a time I will never forget. That was just amazing, you know. And then yeah. after that, there was a whole snowball effect. We had this great, great kind of um, attention from, and as I spoke about Chris Ingham, uh, Chris Ingham was were fantastic classic rock magazine and metal hammer magazine at that time i'm talking like 2010 um yeah and just really elevated uh the underdog up you know which was us at the time fantastic yeah w- was great so it's kind of like a whole thing you know yeah, 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 yeah. Enough, you said about pride it's um um so that's been 20 years um this and there was two of the guys are living in the states um so again it was one of those a message came through oh wouldn't it be good to do some some shows you know and i was thinking crikey you know <laughs> you know could i you know picked up an acoustic guitar it's like wow like just trying to remember these things that i'd written in my bed sitting bright and you know like uh oh yeah yeah maybe we could do these shows. <laughs> um but i that, I don't think that would would ever happen, but there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pride, support yeah. fucking uh, Chris Martin on tour. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> well, I, I'll be quite up for that. Actually. I'll keep quite up for that. Yeah. I'm. I'm uh, funny. Funny thing is, is I, I'm now out. I'm, I, I now play Coldplay songs. You know, when I'm out doing cover songs and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, you should have said to him when he came out. Oh, it sounds like shit in there. You said. You says, yeah, I think it's a band called Coldplay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember at the time thinking to myself, like, I'm not sure. That sounds pretty good to me. I was kind of like, you know, um, but yeah. But you know, it's like, especially when you're young and you're into your rock. It's like, you know, no, this is what it's. It's just about this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that. But that's what that's the rock and roll spirit. I suppose. That's it. So, how old were you when you first picked the mic up? Then, so you said you were in your first band when you were about around about fourteen. Yeah, it was around about that time, I suppose. Uh, the first time I actually did anything um, like that was was at school. I remember I always wanted to play. From from when I was very, very young, my dad would come in and put Led Zeppelin 1 on downstairs, you know, and I'd be in, oh, five years old in bed, you know, and, and I'd it would come through the ceiling and I'd be just pretending, you know, to play, you know, I'll be, I always want to do it, you know. Um, but it's it's one of those things that I think sometimes it's almost like an, uh, uh, an accident how you can get into things unless you've got maybe really supportive folks mm. or maybe, maybe be fortunate enough to have parents with a lot of money or something, you know. Yeah, I remember yeah. back in the day for me, it, when we were younger, especially, I mean, it, it seemed expensive, you know, um, to, I remember asking for a guitar once and it was like my mum's face, you know, was like, um, uh, yeah, like thinking, oh my word, you know, we're gonna have to remortgage, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was at school. Um, we were in a music lesson and we all had to groups and sing a song. And I got a couple of my friends, and I was like, right, let's, let's do uh, this, you got to think of the time of life as I was like, let's do this. Uh, I think Rocky Four was was out in the cinema at the time, mm. and I went really like that song in the burning heart. And you know, oh, let's do that, yeah. And uh, they were like, yeah, all right. And of course, <laughs> when we got to do it in the in the, we all had to stand up and sing, and they didn't sing at all. You know, they were just like <laughs> miming, and I was just singing my head off. You know. Um, really enjoying it. And at that point, um, it was a case of we're doing a band, you're the singer, blah, 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 you know. And it kind of came together like that, oddly enough. And I was like, oh, right. So it was it was a nice kind of 
natural way of going into things, you know? Um, yeah. And it wasn't really until I decided I went to music college um, after school and stuff because I thought this is what I want to do. I think I, I was on a building site for about six months and realized that I want to be on a building site. You know? Yeah. Um, and that I wanted to somehow do music. And I remember I went to this, uh, <laughs> I went to this careers office. And I remember the lady saying to me, well, you might have to go into the army. And I thought, what is this? Like 1950, you know? I was like, come on. Um, and then she sort of put this form down table and said, oh, you could go to music college, you know? And I ended up going and doing like, uh, a, a jazz diploma by, by all things, which was amazing actually, because it threw me in the deep end of, of Mick. Um, and yeah, they just, they just had me singing blues and stuff really all the time. And, and um, of course, because I also played an instrument um, that really helped my musical knowledge. And yeah, just, just things moved on from there really. And as soon as I came out of college, I was lucky enough to join a band, um, like a high flute and function band, and and start to earn a living singer, yeah. which I've never looked back on. I still do that to this day. Of, of course, we've had a, a very upsetting, crazy year, and no one in the industry has been working or anything like that. And it's been the whole world's been upside down, um, but since them times yeah i've been pretty much out doing yeah lots of lots of different shows of sorts yeah for, for a long time now yeah that's and, cool um, yeah it's good that is good it right? is i mean you're paying your dues really in you yeah i mean i'll be honest visual music thing is the thing that um that doesn't put that doesn't put the uh the bread on my table you know yeah yeah um, that's, it, it's all the other things that I do, you know, I, yeah, probably about a hundred, well, it was, uh, you know, a hundred gigs a, a year of sorts and lots of sessions and different things. And I absolutely love it. You know, it's, um, it's, it's just something that of I feel very fortunate to be, to be doing, you know, very fortunate to, to have that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. To be a singer. I, 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 I couldn't see myself not do it not doing it now you know mm. um it'd be be, be, be weird mm. yeah so who, who were your main influences when you were growing up you've obviously mentioned like Def Leppard and, and Joey what's really bizarre and I thought about this recently and it's it's a massive question isn't it you know who's your favorite band yeah. and it's like what you know it's like <laughs> I could not answer that you know yeah, it's like yeah. because it's gone from so many different things when I was a kid, the music that I really found myself, of course, as I said, it was my dad playing like Led Zeppelin, Moody Blues, things like that, that got me into, and then my mum played ABBA and stuff, you know, this really weird sort of switch, you know, when you're a kid, it was like, yeah. but I remember thinking, this is all cool, all of it's cool. Um, and then I found Duran Duran when I was about eight, seven, eight of my own, I thought, wow, that's cool. And Ultravox and these other bands that were coming out. As I got a bit older, yeah, I think Bon Jovi hit in and I was just like, what's that, you know? And my first concert was Europe um, yeah. on their final countdown tour. Um, and I met, I remember I met them and I remember just like being totally in awe. And then my second gig was Bon Jovi on the New Jersey tour. Um, now I just lost my, I just lost it. Then I was just like, this is what I want to do, you know? Yeah. Um, and then of course that whole, and we all talk about it, about being a good time, you know, but that, then it all, oh, the whole thing opened out from there. Def Leppard, I heard, I heard Hysteria and I was just like, that, that was my favourite band when I was at school. Mm. It was like, it was, you know, on, on my pencil case, Def Leppard. Yeah. It was my favourite band. Man. Yeah, but that was a great album though. Hysteria was, an oh, album. was a great album, yeah. you know. Something about it and, and yeah. I remember my mum calling up the stairs. Oh, the, 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 when Steve Clark died. Oh, the guy, the guy in that band you liked passed away. You know, it's on the radio, and I was just in, you know, 
I always think of every year when that comes around. You know, I was I was devastated. They were my favorite band at that that time. Very big influence. Um, I've only seen them a couple of times. Um, I'd love to. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the people that I'd love to meet almost because I'd be I'd be yeah. so. I'd, oh man, I would. It's funny you talk about the Furian thing. I'd never forget at one point. And I think it must have been through Duff Press that we're working with at the time, because I think they were doing something with Def Leppard. I woke up one morning to someone saying, Joe Willick's talking about your band on the radio. And of course, that totally messed with me, you know, because <laughs> he was like, I was like, what? And it was like, yeah, he's on Nikki Six's show in, in over in, I guess it was in California. And it's like, Nikki Six had asked him, are there any good bands coming out of, I mean, again, this is like 2010. Mm, yeah. 11, 12, uh, is there bands coming out of uh, the UK at the moment. And uh, I heard the podcast and then Joe goes, yeah, there's this band called Furum, you know, blah, blah. And, I, and I was just like, you yeah. know, because, because he was, you know, he, he, he was the man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then the influences changed, don't they? I heard the Black Crows and I, all of a sudden I was wearing velvet flares and, uh, you know, <laughs> and just uh yeah that bit all of a sudden yeah all of a sudden for me it was like the black crows and again like uh i loved the choir boys and it was almost like a different uh a whole different change for me then i started thinking what did these guys like and then i started listening to free yeah and yeah. Rod Stewart and, and i did that whole digression you know and then i got into all the music going backwards again that Mike was listening to you know yeah. and went back and realized wow this is really cool and um yeah did that whole thing um and then sort of came full circle and then just yeah everything sort of opened up again and then I think I what was the next one yeah then it was Chris Cornell yeah. I remember just thinking but I was very late for that it wasn't really the sound garden, the early sound garden thing. Uh, Chris Cornell, I think he did a he did a solo album called Euphoria Morning, which I still think is one of the best albums in the world. Um, yeah, and I sort of I, Jeff Buckley was another hit me as well as another. Yeah, that was another another big thing. Um, just at the point when we we're still alive, and yeah, I just my whole sort of world for influence then totally opened out. Um, and then I found myself going straight back again into, I think Bon Jovi brought out These Days. Right. Which is another one of my favourite albums of all time. And um, I then sort of went back to kind of uh, a very sort of narrow path again, going, oh, I really just like this kind of thing, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And then it's just, it opens out again. And yeah, so I think... But that's 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 the wonderful thing about about it all. Right? Music, brilliant, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is awesome. We said it, everybody we spoke to, it's kind of like the one thing that everybody's missed during this lockdown period. So there's you know there's been no shows and you know for for most of my mates that you know we, we go to shows and I, I I don't see them now. I only ever see them. So you know when you you go to different shows around the UK and it's always the same sort of people or similar people that you see at these different shows. Yeah. So, um, I can't wait for it to all to open up and for it all to start going ahead again. I know it's, it's going to be amazing to see, to see everyone again. Um, I mean, um, it was the same for me, of course, going out and playing gigs mm -hmm. as well. And, and I think for many of the other bands going out and playing gigs, it's like, wow, especially these bands just tour yeah. a lot, you know, um, for me, it wasn't so much about the original thing. It was more of my cover stuff that I'm constantly doing to, to, to earn. And uh, it all stopped. And it was like, whoa, you know, you realise that that's where you were seeing people, like what you were saying. You go to a gig, you meet up with everyone there, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the, the, whole, um, the, the whole online presence blew right yeah. up, didn't it, for everyone. And it was actually something that I didn't... Um, I didn't get 
to involve, you know, I, I, I didn't, I don't think I played one online, I haven't played one online show or anything like that. Not because I didn't want to, um, but because I kind of, I was kind of enjoying what mm. everything else. I, I don't know what it was. I just, I kept thinking to myself, oh, maybe I'll do this soon, you know. I didn't have the quite quite the right setup to do it. Um, and then before I knew it, I was just, you know, I was just watching everyone else and just going, wow, that's brilliant, you know, <laughs> and enjoy yourself. There were some really good ones as well. Yeah, that has been good. That has been good. You know, that's, that's probably one of the one of the good things with social media, isn't there, really, is as a, a burden it can be. And, you know, it, it can be a, quite a bad place to be involved in as well. But it's, it's kept. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Hasn't it? So, you know, it has been a good thing, a bit of a blessing, really, during COVID. Absolutely, yeah. For the for the bands and the music and stuff, it's been great. I mean, I'm not a fan overall, you know. Um, like you were saying, uh, you know, on the whole the whole social media thing in general, I think it's just, you know, if I sometimes when I when I really think about it, it's like, well, you know, how crazy, you know, that that everything is 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 like this, and everyone feels the need to have to just post, you know, post all the time about everything and you know whatever whatever's going on but I get it as well mm. I totally get it you know it's uh it, it's one of those things and you know I've got many I know many people that have sort of said oh um, you know I'm not doing that anymore you know and then you know and they're almost talking like it's um you know a very hard thing to stop doing you know yeah because <laughs> it's a habit I guess you know it is yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah. yeah and all of that stuff but but let's face it it's also an amazing thing you know yeah you know it's it's just it isn't you know it, it's great you know so it's just i guess it's like most things it's just trying to find a happy medium you know yeah yeah sort of its own worst enemy really isn't it, it? Is it? Yeah. 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 but i mean but right now right now we're getting to chat um, we probably maybe we could do this anyway without social media but it's really social media that's kind of put this together you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's, so, it's weird. Yeah. It's a weird one, uh, you know. It, yeah, like you said, in one breath you love it, and then and in the other breath you hate it. And I, I just think it's because there's so many fucking idiots on it. To be honest, that's the, yeah, that's no, half the problem. It is. There's a lot of negativity on it, but you've got to, yeah, you've got to filter that yeah, out and pick out of it what you want. I mean, really. Yeah, that, that's that's it, really. I mean, but um, to be honest, you know, I mean, it in the circles that that. You know, if you're just thinking about you know music and stuff, it's it's, it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but um, uh, yeah, it's it, it's good. But yeah, it's funny. I I kind of just try and stay very focused on the music, you know. And, and, and yeah, that, me that's too. Now is yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been banned so many times from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm up to like thirty day bans. So they ban me for thirty days at a time, and. Uh, yeah, just just because you post a silly joke or something, and then somebody takes offence, and it's just like, oh. what are you talking about? Like, you know, it's like, I saw a joke, I saw a thing yesterday about that American football player coming out uh, as 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 gay, you know, and it was all over the news, it's mainline news, and then a, an American, uh, they've got sort of like a loose women program in America, with like five oh, women right. hosting it or whatever, and the one woman is actually a comedian, and she said. She, this, this, it was a day later about that guy coming out as gay and uh, she said, oh, they lost me when they, because he's an American footballer, she said, oh, they lost me when they started penetrating the end zone. And I, okay. you know, and it's quite a funny joke, really, but it, it was so much offence taken, you know, especially on Twitter. I mean, Twitter's a, Twitter's a really nasty place to be sometimes. And everybody was calling for her to be fired and, you know, mm. that, you know at the end of the day, it's just a joke, you know. Wow. And everybody's lost a sense of well, humor. It's like this is the thing. I mean, you know, it's um, yeah. I mean, she, so she said that, did she? On the yeah, show, yeah, she said yeah. it on the television. Yeah, yeah, it was on the show. And yeah. then that, yeah. before they cut to cut yeah. to the advert, I mean, she is a comedian. <laughs> God, there's an empty seat here, is it? No, before they cut to the advert, she said, "Oh, forget, forget, forget about that joke I made. Scrub it from the show." Yeah, you know. But obviously it was a live well, program, yeah. it was live television. But uh but yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful, it? it's it's man, what, yeah. what's wrong with the, people? The thing the thing is, yeah, I mean, you know, she she obviously yeah, she 
let's hope that she didn't mean anything by it. You know what I mean? Because you know, you, you would you wouldn't you know you wouldn't say things like that. You know. So, um, but yeah, you but yeah, you're you're right in saying you know. Of course, w when anyone says anything, ev everything is everything is you know is is shone upon. You know. Yeah. So it's. Uh, that's well, the, the thing. Everyone would have jumped on her, but yeah, mm. um, well, she, yeah, well, she shouldn't well, be saying she shouldn't be saying things like that. But, you know, I, <laughs> well, at the end of the day, she's a comedian. And she made a joke, you know. And but she's were, a comedian, like you're saying, yeah. And sure. they were saying, you know, oh, what if Carlson had said it, or what if another male? Uh, oh, Matt's gone. He doesn't like this conversation. <laughs> Please, <laughs> oh, come back, come back. <laughs> what if Carlson had said it, or another male? Um, uh, newsreader or whatever had said it in America, you know, then their shows would have been cancelled. So she should be cancelled. And it's like, mm. it's a joke. And if you don't like the joke, move on and just let the people that like the joke enjoy the joke, you know, instead of everybody calling for cancel, everything is about cancel culture and you're, you're not allowed to say this and you're not allowed to say that. It's like, well, just, we're all, we're all, we're all human beings and we all, not all of us like the same thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, not everybody is, likes is, rock music. Some people like folk music. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we don't fucking want to kill each other on Twitter about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Twitter's a. Um, I quite. It's funny. I, I always quite liked Twitter in the sense that it was so. Uh, it's so quick, you know. Um, it feel. I, it's funny. You sh you see people on Twitter, and and it almost feels like uh, they feel like they can say, like, absolutely anything, you know. Um, so yeah, recently I've just kind of like I don't know. It's yeah, I haven't all been about the music for me, you know. I yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the funny thing is, is with you know when you make it about the music, you know, um, people I don't know. Like uh, I'm not sure how how much people want to know. It's like hey, yeah, I'm putting a new album out. You know, here's some guitars. You know, it's like uh, you know people are like oh cool. You know, and then if you were to just say something blasé then it's like you know yeah that gets the attention the are out. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah it's bizarre yeah it's bizarre. that's why i'm always careful what i say and then i gotta try and fill the terry that's the way we work <laughs> 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 I, I try to be the diplomat <laughs> well that, that's it that's it you have to be diplomatic yeah it is it is art because you you gotta you gotta sort of like know your audience as well so it's yeah, even yeah, yeah, yeah. an environment in an office. You've got to be very careful as you know as to what you say. And if it's a, a harmless joke, somebody could be walking past and you could upset them. And you know the joke's not in them, and you're not even telling the joke to them. But you can still offend people that just hear it. So it's um, yeah. it's, it's society cool, now, cool. isn't it? That's kind of like where we are, unfortunately. Yeah, but like it is, even only year one. You're, you're you're right, yeah. But I, I guess in you know the, the thing about. Um, it's like a text, you know, the thing about stuff being online is that you can't, um, you know, it's very hard to text and people not understand exactly what you're saying sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. because, because you're not there in person. Yeah, you know? that's so, exactly right. That's, yeah, that's yeah. how you interpret it. Yeah. People have to, people have to keep that in mind, you know what I mean, like straight yeah. away. You know? um, I mean, but yeah, people, you know, this is the funny thing. I mean, I still have friends tag me on on online, you know, with 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 stuff all the time. You know, looks at me, you know, um, and it's uh, I know that they're just, you know, they're just having fun at me. Yeah. You know, it, it's not, you know, it's not it's not even me taking, you know, what I mean, like taking the things. But yeah, this is the yeah, thing. It's not malicious. It, no. Yeah, you have to be. You know, it's just it's just the way it is, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, it's all about the music for me. So and and just the projects and stuff, you know. Because as soon as I get off of that, you know, if it, if it's a case of if I start looking at even new the news, you know, I'm just like yeah. wow. And some of the replies, you know, it's just horrendous. I'm just like, man, I can't look at this. This is terrible, you know. Um, yeah. So I'll just I'll you know I'll pick and choose, you know. I think oh no, you know pot. Go back to the positive world. Your positivity, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> so if um, if you could take your band, yep. so you no disrespect to the cold hearts that are in there at the moment, with mm -hmm. any musician, alive or dead, who would you uh, who would you put in your play with you on stage? Whoa. 
That's a toughie. Um, I think... I think Steve Clark would be one of them. And I would say... John Bonham. Steve Clark Bonham, well. Wow. And um, maybe, maybe Phil on uh, on base. Okay, Phil Liner. Phil Liner, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was just going to say it to you, actually. <laughs> what, what, we, what, what to say? Put him on base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cause we're thinking alike there, I think. But, but the thing is, is that I'd probably be just like, oh no, you sing, you sing as well. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking as well. I'll just sit back and watch. Put Phil Lynott on base. I'm just going to sit and watch, yeah. Because, he, he, you know, he's he's backing you up all day, you know? Yeah. As, as With his vocals, I mean. Not not only with the bass, but with his vocals also. Oh, yeah. But that would be a pretty cool band. I've never thought of that. That's a, that was a bit of an on-the-spot one, yeah. Mm. That was a bit, yeah, I never thought of that so much. But, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right, then, okay. mate. Any any questions, Terry? No, I haven't got anything. Any questions, mate? I'm gonna let you okay. run this one. I ran the one yesterday, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we take it in turns. <laughs> but yeah, nice so, to meet uh, you, Matt. Yeah, so we'll be and I'll be seeing you very very soon on the mountain, uh, and uh, and then you've got a few shows coming up this year as well, and then the new album next year. Yeah, hopefully well, the new um, album. Yeah, the new well, the new album's going to be out at some point. You know, it's to be, it, it has to be done. Um, <clears throat> um, but like I said, at this point of time, when I'm thinking about it's going to be next year, I would have thought. But hopefully, you know, that maybe a single will be out by the uh, um, by the end of the year. But um, I'm really excited about it. There's some there's some really exciting tunes on there. Um, yeah, good. Right. Can't say too much at the moment, really. Yeah, yeah, that's a trouble with, uh, with you with secretive musicians. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is because it's a case of all I can say is it's I'm gonna get it out there somehow. It's gonna it's gonna go out, but um, yeah, hopefully. It, I think the biggest thing about it is it's like uh, in what in what way in what fashion? You know, would it be a, another self release? Would it be with a label? You know, would it be this? Would it be that? You know. Um, so um yeah it's gonna be exciting um but it gets out you know that's yeah. that's that's the main thing yeah yeah cool. and uh, hopefully you'll come back on and talk about it when it's out or just absolutely. before it comes out <laughs> yeah absolutely well that's what i said to, i was saying that to dave you know i was saying uh you know um we should talk then but of course he was like no no come on now <laughs> well, <laughs> that's right all right yeah well yeah. you know we get Same to know you him. and uh and our audience gets to know you a little bit and then uh, they can go through your back catalogue and then everyone gets excited for when your new stuff comes out. Brilliant. I think, I mean, great to meet you and thanks for having me on the show. I mean, yeah, and for people that have never really gone through that back catalogue that might only know me from um, Matt Mitch and the Cold Hearts or, uh, or Colour of Noise, um, as Dave said earlier, yeah, it's quite a colourful... Uh, mixture you know mm. um yeah it 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 goes from blue to heavy to light um to yeah it's kind of it's kind of you know it's all around so um that's interesting and um yeah you reminded me of the uh the strip back sessions that me and bruce did that was uh that was a good memory that so uh, yeah that's that's one for people to check out yeah it's really, really good. I'll, I'll, I'll share some of those in the in the socials when this comes out. So I'll put put your new singles on, well, your current singles, and then I'll put some of the colour and noise on, on Fury in as well. So thank you, man. We'll get uh, we'll get everybody to listen to it. It's good stuff. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming on. It's been good. I have got one one uh, final question. Uh, cool. I meant to ask. Um, what's your inspiration when you're doing your songwriting? Wow. Um, it's people really um, it's a very I can't help but I'd love to be a little more 
I'd, I'd love to kind of think, oh yeah, I'm writing a song about um, the way that the, the, the concrete uh, comes apart and blah, blah. You know, I, I've got friends that, you know, are in like some, you know, wonderful kind of concept bands or, you know, thing, and, and they always come out with these great uh, songs. I go, what's that about? And, and I'm so interested and they go, what's your song about? And I feel terrible by going, well, it's about his girlfriend, yeah. or, or it's about, you know, it's about, it's about uh, my dad, actually talking about, earlier talking about my dad, uh, there was probably every year I probably write a song about my relationship with my dad, every year of my life, it's crazy. So um, that, uh, yeah, that's, so saying that, there's people in my life normally influence me. Um, and I get influenced by watching people in their lives as well. Like, so for instance, if I have a friend that's going through a hard time or a friend that's going through an amazing time, that might influence me as well. But it's normally always about the people and, and, and the story of our lives kind of tunes, really. Um, it really is, you know, and that's kind of, it just seems to be what inspires me to write. Yeah. Um, and not only sad times, but happy times, too. You know, yeah. Um, I did. I I have on a few occasions tried to venture off and write about things that are happening um, outside of that. Really, more kind of like very much worldly. Um, and I've done that on this new record. Um, I did a little of that on the on the on the debut um, as well. Um, but yeah, it's normally about um, it's about the you know, people around me, people that I meet. You know, yeah. I get inspired by um, that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, but it's funny you should say that. I'd say yeah, there's probably about there's probably about forty songs written about um, <laughs> about like my dad or something like that. Yeah. yeah, which is great, you know, because it obviously means. You know, it's been a a big inspiration. Yeah. You know? uh, but it's not that at the end, and I won't realize it at the time. I realize I'll go, oh, that's about that's about my dad and when he passed, or this or that, or you know, it would be a, you know, it's it's interesting because sometimes I don't realize that. Yeah. You know, until yeah. until later on, um, I listen to the lyrics again, and I think, oh, I thought more about this, but it's like, no, I think it's more about that. You know, yeah. oh wow. Is your mum still alive, Matt? <clears throat> My mum's still alive. She's she's very much alive. Um she's she's great. She's uh yeah, she's awesome. Don't you um, get jealous about all these songs about your dad? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she knows. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the thing is is that um I'll yeah, I'll have to get her to watch your podcast and then I'll just see if That's I it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, man, this one's about you. Yeah. This one's about you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I want to have a chat with you. Where's my? <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just those kind of things, really. Um, I don't know. It's it's it's. She's she's good. She's good. Um, she's she's all good. Yeah. Brilliant. Great Brilliant stuff. I'll tell I'll tell you. You said hi. Yeah. Yes. yes do. <laughs> Hello, Matt's mum. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell her to fast the forward family. to the end. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Rock and roll, right? Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah. Well, That's thanks for coming on, Matt. And uh, I can't wait for the new album. And I can't wait to see you on stage, Matt. It's too, too long. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to catching you down at Steelhouse. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be amazing. I'd love to stick around for the whole... The whole um, event but I, i've actually uh, there's other gigs that i've got to go and do um straight away the next day so uh yeah. um i'll be there that day that we're playing and yeah thoroughly enjoying myself as always Are you driving because i'll get you a beer if you're not um i will be driving uh, but but um that doesn't mean to say that i won't it doesn't mean to say that i won't be driving the other the other side the other of the way driving yeah yeah, yeah. so um um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, but yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. No problem. We'll see you soon. Thank you, mate. Yeah, thanks, thanks, for, for, uh, thanks for coming on. And we'll thanks, talk guys. to you again about your new album. Yeah.
Brilliant. Brilliant. Cheers, Matt. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Yeah. And you, Thank man. you. And Bye. you. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye. -bye. I've been moved. All right. Yes. Good. Matt has been removed. Good. Yeah. Always <laughs> comes up with a removed thing on it. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I kick him off, if he's because I thought he was going to be waiting for me, so. Uh, yeah. If I remove him, then he's gone straight away. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, he's a really good front man. Really good. Really good live. So I'm not. I'm not surprised when he said, you know, colour and noise was all about the live music. Because he's, uh, you can see, he, he loves being on stage and he's very um, going and, you know, he's, he's a very, very good front man to watch. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. When the Steelers now? Um, it's next month. Um, I think it's the end of July. I'm not sure, it's like the second or third weekend in July. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, you know, thinking across that it's going to happen. So, um, cause it's got a really, really good lineup. So, uh, I can't wait, but I, the funny thing is I got, I got Matt's t-shirt here, yeah, but that's a medium. And this one is a large. And I remember when I bought this, they only had large left and I was slimmer back then. So I, I don't even know that one fits me. So I could have to squeeze into that one. Ready for the best <laughs> one, <right? laughs> but, um, yeah, he's uh, yeah, really good guy. Great life. And, uh, I can't wait to see him. I yeah, the new album would be good. Yeah, just hope the festival goes ahead then, and uh, otherwise it's going to be a bit of a shame. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I've got everything crossed for that. Yeah, they haven't announced anything else in the Welsh news. No, in you know, in, in fairness, Steelhouse are, are saying that it, it's going ahead, and they, they've announced all the lineup. Like I said, you know, one of the bands um, fell out, and they've just shifted everybody up the line. Uh, yeah, yeah, Anthrax. Yeah, Anthrax pulled out, unfortunately. Um, you know, I've had, I've had my tickets through. I've had the, the glamping tickets have come through. There's people that are posting because we are member of the Steelhouse Arch group and they're posting on stuff every day, counting down the days yeah, and yeah. sharing all music of the bands that are coming on there as well. So, um, yeah, everybody's right. really excited. It's going to happen. Tidy. I just look forward to uh, seeing Matt. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to guess on my phone, and um, I'll try and get a couple of little uh, interviews before or after. Because the, the nice thing with Steelhouse is the majority of the acts do mingle with um, with the fans. You know, obviously the the top acts don't necessarily come off, come and mingle um, a lot of the time, but they do sometimes sneak around earlier on in the day. So um, you never know. We'll try and get a few uh, few little quick interviews with people while I'm there. Well, I told you what to do. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, mate. Right. Have All right, we'll call it a day. Yeah, I, was, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, nice guy. Uh, a nice one. Yeah, he's a top guy. He's a nice guy. guy. Yeah, we all have been, haven't they? Yeah, they're so good, yeah. yeah. So, uh, cool. yeah. All right, then, mate. Over and out. Oh, before you do go. Go on, then. The expression on your face when he mentioned winger did make that, <laughs> and I knew exactly what you were thinking because obviously when we had that, that the, the chat with the Orton Killers and Rob said about he loved winger. winger and you were like, is he a real guy? And as soon as that mentioned that, I just seen your face like that when you started chuckling. <laughs> so yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, he said a couple of things actually that, that tell me. And I was thinking back to other podcasts. I was like, yeah. Yeah, you obviously didn't watch that one. <laughs> no, you didn't watch the other one. That's cool. So, all right, anyway. right. All yeah, right, take it easy. Have, have a good evening. Yeah, have a good and you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. All right.